It's a mystical morning on Cattle Lake. Good morning, almost start. We're starting y'all right back here where we left it. And uh, actually got some friends out here. This is the Low Chow Pond Management Group. That organization was started by someone that was in my, uh, in my classes at A&M. And he was actually, I think he was the fishing club president when I first got there. Anyways, uh, they are spraying for giant salvinia out here on Caddo Lake. I actually ran into them on the last video and didn't know it was them. And then I saw them at the boat ramp and we got to talking. Appreciate what they're doing out here, keeping the waters clean. Gig them. <laughs> Good old eggs. Show you guys how much water is in the boat from last night's rain. It's crazy all up in the crispy so first thing we got to do this morning before we launch the boat is take our plug out i've got the plug in this boat from the inside so that way if i ever forget it i can just put it back on so, from the inside you can always get your boat up on pad and then that'll help drain the water out i'm actually downhill right now so i need to move my truck so all the water drains out of here I think we about got it now, y'all. And I had to fill up with gas. I actually used a lot of gas yesterday. I brought an extra tank and I filled up another one of my tanks. So I have two tanks on the crispy. If I run out, I can just switch over to the next one. And I made my life a lot easier. I'm gonna recommend something for anyone with a small boat or even just mixing like your your gas at home for your lawn mowers and things like that. This is made by Sea Choice. I got this on Amazon, but it is basically a, a mixing calculator. I'm an Aggie, I'm not very good at math. Uh, this has 100 to one, 50 to one, 40 to one, 24 to one, and this little motor right here is a 100 to one. So it makes it really easy. Uh, I put a little gasoline in there with it, mix it up before you pour it in, so that way it's not getting gunky. Making sure you're getting a nice good mix. As soon as I get the boat in the water, the rain starts. So I'm just kind of looking at the radar right now and trying to see, is this gonna last or what? And it looks like we're just on the tail end. I don't want to take all my camera, get out, out there and get soaked. And in the crispy, <laughs> there's no bilge pump. So hopefully this stuff will lay off and we can get out on the water. And I've also thought about changing locations and going to uh, the main part of the lake. I'm only fishing the river right now. It's a long ways. <coughs> I'm just gonna sit here for another 10 minutes and see what this weather does and then make a call. So I made a decision to go to this other boat ramp and this is supposedly the oldest marina in Texas and there was an old man working in there and he cleans a lot of the fish so he gave me some insight into where a lot of the bass fishermen and the crappie fishermen are catching their fish and I was able to purchase an actual map, a waterproof map which I need right now. It's hard to find physical maps like this anymore. So if you go into an old tackle store and they have them, buy them because it's it's a cool memento. Now with like Google Earth and you know everything being digital, it's kind of cool to have these. So I'm glad I was able to get one, and I'm a, I'm gonna actually go to one of the places that he told me to go. Y'all, look at this. This is swampy. This is straight up swampy, and it's raining pretty bad right now. I'm hoping that uh, it's gonna gonna stop. He also said that bass fishermen are catching two pound crappie, throwing weightless fluke style baits, weightless plastics, and crappie fishermen are catching five pound bass, throwing minnows around the stumps. So, I love this time of year because everything mixes. It's just, uh, it's just finding where that mixing area is. Okay, so I'm actually on the lake today. There's a lot more boats. 
fishing out here. I mean, a lot more boats. I'm just starting out flipping stumps because that's literally what it looks like would be going on. But there's also a lot of hydrilla out here, which, hmm, that could be good too. Oh my, getting smashed right there by something. What the heck is that? Okay, well, just had my first bite of the day. On the old swim bait. I think that's gonna be my confidence bait for here. Swimming through all this grass. I've got a bite mark at the head, so that had to have been a bass. A little quarter ounce weight on here. And I'm just gonna swim it over this grass. I have no idea what's good. The, like this whole lake is just flat and I don't have a depth finder, so. Oh. Oh. First fish on, and let's watch that happen. There we go. Get up in here and look at that healthy fish right there, y'all. Baby. Got him on that three aught hammer hook with uh, with our old friend the lunker log. I saw a boil up there shallow. This is right in the same area I had that bite on the swim bait. And as soon as I, I started my camera, <laughs> I threw right out there. And as soon as it hit the water, he came over and smacked it. So that's our first actual landed fish. Do you know what the water temp is? 64. 64, dang, okay. They should be doing it up in here. That gun. Okay, y'all, we got the monkey off the back. And I just had one more bite, too. I was talking to a fishing freak. I wasn't paying attention. Ran into him. He, he fishes here quite a bit. He hadn't had any bites up shallow, and I told him I'd, I'd got bit on a swim bait so far, and then had one on weightless bait and then he just caught one on uh, black and blue swim bait, swimming it out there a little farther out. So that might be the move. More off the main river channel might be the key, but that's three bites so far, only one fish landed. But I should have gave it a sniff, Dad. comment. This place is awesome. It's got me wanting to come back. Look at the, it is a maze of cypress trees, a maze absolutely beautiful just imagine coming here in the 1800s on a riverboat and just looking at all this and trying to navigate it it blows my mind and so part of the reason i wanted to fish here is because because of the history as the oldest port in texas all kinds of cargo came through here Makes me want to build a Texas time machine. Let's go try to figure out a few more bites out here before we gotta head to Mississippi. Had him up in the shallows. Oh. Okay, I just lost my second fish. <sighs> right under the trolling motor. Soon as I cut my damn camera off, that fish was ultra shallow.
you lose a big one? Yeah. I heard you yelling. How big do you think? Oh, dude! Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, it was probably six. Gosh, oh, dang. Man. I had a couple over there, like, jerking my worm kind of up top. Yeah. And uh, they kind of, not like a top water, but it swirled on it. Right I'm sorry, man. No, <laughs> I literally watched his, like, third bite of the day. That fish blew up on it. He was looking at me. I distracted him and I was talking to him when I got by earlier and anyway he said he broke off a big on uh, on a weightless bait just kind of like out the middle they were pretty small bites like you know one and a half pounders or so but a bite is a bite so I have about 30 minutes before I need to leave because I'm on a I'm on the clock I got to get to Mississippi tonight it seems like though with all this rain that's come in everybody i've talked to they've only had a few bites or haven't had any bites at all uh, they're either fishing too fast or like the stuff that they're normally used to it's just not working because the water has has risen up and it's a lot of fresh water too i'm not sure what the salinity is but anyway that's getting a little too biological let's just fish one more spot and then let's get on the road to mississippi shoot you gotta stay in the boat lanes out here Woohoo! you'll be in trouble God, he ate it right there in between the trees. Oh my gosh, it's a pickerel. Holy cow. Holy cow, I got a pickerel. Oh my gosh, this is my first in Texas. Holy cow, this is awesome. Guys, look at that. That freaking thing smoked it. And look, he's got teeth. That is insane. And his tail's bloody. I wonder if he's spunk. Whoa, whoa, easy, bud. Easy. First chain pickerel in the books. That's pretty cool, new species. New species. Man, that thing's slimy. <laughs> wow, he freaking blew up on it too. I've still got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna keep working around here, but that was sweet. They also have bowfin in here, which is an ancient fish in its own family of fishes. I've caught those before, but they live in shallow water, uh, old, you know, grass lakes and stuff like this one so that's a possibility as well but i'm gonna keep throwing that little lunker, lunker log just twitching it in between the trees and uh, see if we can get any more bites there's so much water in here y'all i mean it just goes back forever it seems that's literally how i've gotten some of my bites is like i've seen a fish back there swirling on something eating something chasing a bluegill or whatever and I throw back and I'll get a bite. So I just saw that happen way back in here. So give it the old long flippy toss. I guess that's where they spawn. I mean, I'm, I'm sure the roots are like a good spawning bottom. Roots of these cypress trees, but oh. Not sure what that was. All right, there's a couple of big cypress trees off the channel that are just calling my name for a big one. Odds are, won't get bit, but I gotta try it. Oh my God, what in the world was that? That had to be an alligator. If it wasn't, it was a 27 pound bass. What in the dealio? Heart rate just came up a little bit. Something just hit under my boat. Like, what the heck? What is going on? Well, y'all, if you're gonna come here, I would say get your weightless gear out. Go ahead and rig you a couple of rods up for that because the grass is so thick that you're just gonna be dealing with it if you're throwing anything else. So when I was up in the river, I was able to get a jig out and it was just cleaner. And um, you could still throw a jig on some of the stumps here, but this is it. This is it for Caddo for right now for me. 
I have to come back for the crappies. I have to come back and give it a full day. It's, it's worth a whole week out here. But since it was on my way to Mississippi, I, I had to test it. That is it! Ah. Mississippi, here I come. disappointing news so I just got back to the truck and I'm on my way to Mississippi and I just wanted to plug in my address and I got an email saying urgent uh, cancel so I opened it up and the guys I was supposed to meet with they are uh, one of them is in the transportation industry and he said that they're closing the border of US and Canada he might get stuck. This is crazy. I don't even know what to think of it. Um, I'm driving back home right now in that direction. This is just so weird. Is it? It's like fishing. I love. I love fishing, and this is a huge adventure time for me. Traveling on the road and just going to lake to lake, and trying to figure them out. I love what I do, but I also need to get home to my family. I feel like that's just probably need to stay there and stay close just in case something happens and I'm able to to be with them so these are just uncertain times that we are living but I appreciate you guys support and I apologize for not being able to go on this trip I've, I've been this trip already got canceled one time because of rain and it's something I've been wanting to do since last fall so it sucks it sucks. I really wanted to expand my knowledge of crappie. And anyway, y'all, I think we're going to shut it down right here and I'll pick it up somewhere. I got to find some other adventures to go on, but I can't leave the family behind in wake of this Corona thing. So I hope wherever you are, you're safe, you're sound, you're with your family. And this thing is under control where you are. But thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you and Godspeed. I'll see you on the next one.